Hey friends and welcome back. It is a very exciting time. We are getting all of our tomatoes processed for the year. So here I have 20 pounds of tomatoes and then here I have just a little bit more. I didn't weigh these out. These are cherry tomatoes and just some leftover extra like Romas. So today we are getting these all processed up. Now these are looking a little rough because they've been in my freezer. So I want to go ahead and make sure that we, some of them, I laid these out last night at like eight o'clock, but some of them are still frozen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay them out on our roaster sheet so we can make some marinara sauce. Like last year, we made that roasted marinara sauce. It's phenomenal, so we're gonna do that again this year. Um, so what I wanna do is I just wanna lay these out. What I did before I put them in the freezer was I went ahead and cut off the tops and I washed them. So that way they're really easy to process. We will run these through a mill um, that I actually just got and I'm super, super excited. This is gonna be our first project with them. So I'm really looking forward to that. But first thing I wanna do is just get these roasting. Main reason for that is because some of them are still frozen. I wanna make sure that we can get them fully defrosted before I put them in my mill. Now you are supposed to cut these in half and lay them lengthwise down, but because mine are not in the best condition because they've been frozen. I'm just going to lay them out just like this. I think they'll be totally fine. My biggest concern is that my pans will run over with tomato juice, but we're just gonna cross our fingers and say a little prayer. And if we have to clean up, so be it. It's gonna be fine. Yeah, these are still really frozen at the bottom. So I'm gonna use the roasting method mostly as a defroster since these are all frozen. So we're gonna get these going on the roaster pans. And then while that happens, I'm gonna get my food mill set up. Into the oven, this first tray is gonna go. And I just have my oven set to 375 degrees. And actually, let me grab the recipe. So today we'll be following this canning book. I will link this down below in the description if you wanna check it out. I only have two canning books, this one and then the Ball Original book. I will link both of them down below, but I swear that's about all you need in the canning world. They have the best, best, best tried and true recipes. I absolutely love them. But today we're gonna to be using this oven roasted marinara recipe on page 204. You can see it's been well up. It's got some water damage on it, but it's still perfectly good. So first thing we need to do is get 20 pounds of these tomatoes, which I've already weighed out. So that's perfect. And we're just gonna roast these. It says for about 45 minutes. So that's perfect. That gives me time to wash my new food mill, figure it out, read the instructions. I've done none of that yet. So that'll be perfect. And then we can fumble our way through my food mill together. I acknowledge and applaud the people that have the bandwidth and time to can as you go. I work full time. I just don't have that time. I hope one day I will, but right now I'm not there yet. So this is the method that works best for me. Okay, this is gonna go in the oven next. And then lastly, my roaster pan full is going in. If I had more roaster pans, I would have done all of them on roaster pans, but we're making do with what we have and that's perfect. Okay, next, since we're just doing a single batch, we need one and a half cups of onions chopped, which says is about the equivalent of two medium onions Neither of these onions are that large, so we'll see if this is enough. We can always cut up more. Okay. These don't have to be perfect by any means. I'm just gonna throw them in here so we can measure. This is just a one cup measurer. I'm just gonna dump that in here. And then we'll cut up this other half. I think this is gonna actually be the perfect amount. It's 
literally perfect. Okay. I'm gonna keep this cutting board out because we are gonna be chopping up some garlic and then for our pizza sauce, I'll probably do some more onions. Actually, yeah, let me get another onion chopped up. We'll use that for the pizza sauce and then we're gonna go ahead and get our meal set up. All right, you guys, so this is the food mill that I got. It's Pressure Tomato by Weston. And I took out the auger and the screens to get those washed. So I'm just following the, re the, the recipe, the instructions here. But anything that the food is gonna touch, I wanna make sure that we are cleaning very well. So this looks like this is what attaches to the machine and then the tomatoes will come out here and the pulp will come out that side. So I wanna get this washed. We have this presser. The nice thing is, is I have knowledge with a meat grinder and this looks to be very similar to the meat grinder. I know there are some meat grinders that do also have the screens, but ours is not that kind, unfortunately. And then I think this is the engine situation. Yep, okay, cool. So we don't need to wash this. I might just like wipe it down a little bit, but so there's those. Let me get this box out of the way, get these two things cleaned, and then we'll start assembling, yeah, assembling. Oh, and I forgot to mention, we also have this. So this is the little bowl that's gonna go on the top that the tomatoes will sit into. So I need to get this washed as well. Here goes nothing. Again, I have a little bit of knowledge from the meat grinders, so that's helpful. I do know that this little auger thing will go inside that and this will come on top of that. And there are little grooves here. And so I'm pushing, matching up the groove on this, with the groove here, and then push that down. And then this goes on top and holds that on. Basically, that's the exact same thing as a meat grinder. And then you want these to be tight, but not like crazy tight. Okay, that's where my knowledge comes out. So now we're gonna go to the book and this supposedly, oh, okay. That just slides right into that. Except for I need to think that through because if I attach this here, I know this will sit on top. And so this is back upside down at the moment. Let's try to get that back off carefully. There's little clips, so I think I just need to, okay. So let's think this through. This is gonna go on like this. So I need this to sit that. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> Who would have thought that turns? Okay. Even easier than anticipated. And I think this should just go on. Oh, okay. That was easy. Did I heard that click. Now let's put this on. Excellent. That feels secure. Then this, I think, yep, slides right into that. Wow, okay, that was like 10 seconds worth of assembly and I didn't even know what I was doing. We love that. Okay, that's done. So I just need our tomatoes to finish roasting and then we will get them ground or get them going through here. I'm gonna grab a bowl. I think our pulp is gonna come out of here and obviously our tomatoes are gonna come out of here. So I'm gonna grab a bowl for to catch the pulp and the tomatoes and then we'll be ready to go. That was so easy. All right, our tomatoes are looking roasty toasty in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this good. You can see we're getting a little bit of browning on top. That's perfect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull these out of the oven now and I'm just going to let them cool down a little bit and then we'll get them in the mill and we will get our onions going as well. Okay, now for our onions, we it says to put down cooking spray, throw our onions down, throw cooking spray on top. And we're gonna put these in the oven as well. Whoopsie. We're gonna get these into the oven as well to try to get them to be a little bit more brown, caramelized, that kind of thing. So let's get that going. All right, these have cooled down significantly, so we're gonna give this a go. And I'm just gonna hope and pray that all works out well. So, <laughs> I'm nervous. Okay, 
We're gonna take these, we're gonna put it in here. It's gonna do its thing. It's gonna be great. Don't worry, Morgan. Here we go. Yay, it's working! Okay, you guys, I don't know if you were here last year when I did this, but if you were, oh look, the seeds are coming out. Yay! Oh my gosh. Okay, if you were here last year, you will probably remember I did this all by hand and I was literally so sore the next day. It was so hard because my counters are so thick, the clamps don't clamp on. Oh my gosh, okay, this is great. Let's keep going, we'll get all our tomatoes done. Okay, you guys, so that first pan is done. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna transfer our pizza sauce tomatoes into here just so I can get them roasting up again. These are also mildly frozen. I want to, I'm using the strainer spoon so we can keep the ice water in there. But I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing to these and just roast them up a little bit. I love like a roasty sauce. And with these, we'll probably run them through the strainer as well. So I think, I'm trying to decide what to do with the onions. I think we'll... Mm, I don't know, I think I might just leave the onions as is. I don't know, we'll decide. I'm winging this pizza sauce. I make pizza sauce all the time. So I'm just kind of following my own recipe. And remember, if you're canning something, you need to follow to a T the recipe, but I will be putting this in the freezer because if you've been here before, for a while, you see that I um, make my pizza dough and pizza kits and so with that i like to make sure that i have sauce and that will all go in the freezer so when i'm taking out a pizza kit in the morning i just take out a sauce to go along with it as well and that works really really perfectly to make sure that i have everything that i need i just store them all together in the freezer so that's perfect okay i'm gonna get these going you can save this juice if you want and cook rice with it you can make drinks out of it whatever you want to do so I'm gonna get this going in our 375 degree oven and I'm gonna keep working on the next batch. That was so dang easy. So here's all the pulp I got. So this is the skins and the peels. And if there was a lot of water sitting at the bottom, I would run it again, but there's literally no water. And when I push on it, there's like nothing coming out of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in our freeze dryer, spread it out on some trays and freeze dry it. And see then we can powder it and see what comes of that so i'm not worried that there's a little bit of tomato in there and then this is all of our sauce so this is a ton of sauce i'm super super excited about it so what we need to do is we need to get this put into a stainless steel pot get this on the stove get our onions added in and then we're going to add in the rest of the ingredients get that boiling down until it's the thickness that we want it and then we'll be ready to can i wish i had a better idea for this but i don't so we're just gonna just gonna just send it oh gosh Okay, that wasn't bad. And that's why we wear dark clothes on canning days, right? Let's grab the spatula, get all this yummy tomato sauce out. Okay, excellent. And now we're gonna add in our onions. And make sure if you're doing this, you're using either an enameled or a stainless steel pan. Um, tomatoes are super acidic and tend to be pretty hard on your pots and pans. So. Okay, so to this, we need to add in one cup of red or white dry wine. Whoa, okay. I was not prepared for that. <laughs> These wines are um, from our wedding, so we've been trying to get through them. In other words, I've been cooking with them, so it's kind of funny I'm using a canned wine, but that's fine. I feel like the carbonation will go away. Okay, that was exactly one cup after what I spilled, so we'll put one cup of dry wine. Then we're gonna do a tablespoon of salt. Make sure you're using 
canning salt, non-iodized salt. We just don't want your cans to be cloudy. One tablespoon of salt, one tablespoon of dried oregano. We need two teaspoons of black pepper, and I usually grind my own except for when it comes to canning because this is so much easier. There's one teaspoon, I feel like a lot, I don't know why. Two teaspoons. And then six cloves of minced garlic. So I'm gonna grab that. And I'm just gonna do crushed garlic. Those are some seriously large cloves of garlic. Finally, we just need two bay leaves. Okay, this is gonna sit here and simmer for I don't know, 15 to 20 minutes. We're gonna keep it uncovered because this is the time that it's going to start thickening. We want all of that water to evaporate so that we can get a nice thick sauce. So I'm just going to let this simmer away. And in the meantime, we can check on our tomatoes in the oven and get our canning jars ready. All right, you guys, very easily could have just blended up our pizza sauce, but I figured the equipment's already out. I'm already doing it. So let's just do it the right way. So I'm going to let this cool. Then I'm going to mill our pizza sauce tomatoes and then we'll get that made up as well. Okay, you guys, this is looking phenomenal. I'm gonna turn it off, it's starting to make a huge mess with the splashing. So finally, what I need to do is add a half a cup of lemon juice, and this is just to make sure that it is safe to water bath can. This is according to the instructions. We're gonna give that a good stir. See how nice and thick that started to get. And that's the best part is you can make yours however thick you want. This is all up to your preferences. I'm gonna give this a taste. Phenomenal. That is so good. I think it's perfect. I don't think it needs anything else. It's exactly how I remember it from last year. Absolutely love it. So let's go ahead and get it canned. I think our jars are all sterilized and we're ready to go. All right, let's get our sauce over here. Beautiful, and it is time to start getting these in our jars. So I'm just going to grab my funnel. I'm pretty sure I do that every single time. I <laughs> think I can just wing it and I don't grab my funnel and then I regret it. So we're just going to ladle these in. I forgot to look though, let me check the recipe. Okay, we need to leave a half an inch of headspace on all of these. So you know the drill. I like to fill them generally almost there. And then we'll come through with our, we'll debubble, we'll do our detail work, and then we'll put our lids on. If you are new to canning and you're interested, I do have a video that is like step-by-step -step tips and tricks on how to not be afraid of canning and how to feel more comfortable with it. We do can something together. So if you're new to canning and you want to try to get into it, definitely take a look at that video. I know canning can feel pretty intimidating when you're first getting into it, especially if you didn't grow up around it or don't know anyone that knows how to can or has taught you to can. So definitely take a check at that video if you're interested. Otherwise, we're just going to get these canned up. This recipe turned out so good. This is our tried and true. We do it every single year because it's just really a hit. And Sam always asks for it when we run out. He's like, where's your marinara? This tastes different. I'm like, I know. It's not the same, but we're working with the best that we can do, dude. I think that's a huge compliment. And it's so cool that we get to eat, you know, our wild game 
along with garden vegetables that we've grown. I just think that is like the biggest reward ever. So I'm gonna get these all canned up. Oh shoot, I forgot to take our bay leaves out. Luckily I found one right here. I'm sure we'll find the other one along the way. There's our other bay leaf, so we're good to go. <laughs> I'm gonna go through and do our more detail work. So here's where I like to run this along the edge, get any big bubbles out. Usually with something like a marinara, there won't be many because there's not much space. It's a sauce, so there's not a lot of like space between anything versus something like a pickled beet, you know, where there's a lot of air space between them. I find those tend to have the most. So now we're going to go in and get our head space correct to a half an inch. And this part's just a little tedious, so I like to just take my time, make sure I'm doing it right, and then we'll get our lids on. So now that our headspace is all set, I'm going to wipe off the rim of each of my jars. Oh no, let me grab a new one. And I like to use paper towels when doing this for that literal very reason, because once that gets dirty, I obviously do not want that coming into the food. I'm looking at this one and this one's a little short. Okay, so that way I can just throw away the paper towel if I accidentally drop it in or it gets dirty. That looks great. Let's get our lids on. And then I'm gonna put these in, remember fingertip tightness, I'm gonna put these in the water bath canner. Standard is 40 minutes, but I am at high elevation, so I'm gonna do 50 minutes. I add an additional 10 minutes, so make sure that you're checking your elevation and you're doing that correct. I am going to get these in the canner, then I'm gonna get this all cleaned up. We're gonna finish up the pizza sauce and get our pulp on the freeze drying trays and we're gonna call it a day. Okay, you guys, so my cans you can see are processing back behind me. So next let's finish our pizza sauce. So for this, what I want is a really smooth pizza sauce. And the reason I'm not canning this is, be whoa, is because I like my pizza sauce a particular way. So we're gonna do it that way. It's not a canning safe recipe. So, I'm going to do it my way. Okay. So that was just some caramelized onions and these are garden onions to that. I'm going to add in some nice olive oil and I'm going to add in the rest of that marinara sauce as I figure why not? And you can definitely do this in your, with an immersion blender, but because I have mine going into a, my nice cast iron, like enameled cast iron, I don't want to scratch that. So I'm going to put mine in a blender just to be rather be safe than sorry. So there was just some red pepper flakes, I'm adding in a good amount of basil and a good amount of pepper. I'm gonna do about a teaspoon of salt. And then I roasted up the rest of the garlic clove while my onion was cooking. So we're just gonna add in our roasted garlic and it just slides right on out. That's gonna add a really nice dimension. And then I'm going to just 
scoop in some of our, this is just our skinned sauce. So I tried to use the bigger grater this time because I wanted to see kind of what that would do. And it left the seeds in, which is fine with me for a pizza sauce. You're not gonna be able to like see it or anything, but for a marinara sauce, I wouldn't want that. So I was just kind of testing it out. I wanted to see what the different screens would do. And I'm glad with the marinara sauce that we went with the littler screen. Okay. Start there. Put my lid on. I don't think we'll need that guy. We will need that though. Okay. Make sure this guy's turned on. Perfect. You can tell by the blue light. And let's give this a quick blend. Okay, look how wild this is. That blended most of the seeds. So let's give it a quick taste. Okay, that's phenomenal. Wow. That roasted garlic, that was phenomenal. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can just add the rest of this in. I think there might be too much. putting this girl to the max. And then I'm gonna add in a little bit more red pepper flakes cause we like, not spicy, but kind of spicy. A little bit more basil. Good amount more salt. And a little bit more olive oil. All right, let's give that a try. Grabbed a new spoon. We're gonna take this lid off. Give this a taste test. Oh, that's perfect. Funny thing is, this is like raw still. So I'm gonna stick this back in here. I need to cook this. <laughs> it's that good and it's raw. Okay, back in here. See how smooth that is? I got a, I've never had a Vitamix before. You guys have seen my blender. It's just kind of a crummy one from like Walmart or something when I was in college, but I had grew up with the Vitamix, so I knew I loved them and got one for an early Christmas present. So I'm super, super excited about that. Okay, let's get this on the stove and get this cooked, shall we? All right, you guys, all I did, you can see I made quite a mess, but that's okay. All I did was just simmer this and look at how smooth and perfect that sauce is. So this is pretty potent, which is exactly how we like it. We don't like sauce, you know, like dripping down your arm. I like to be able to taste the sauce, but I don't need it like in my face. So this is exactly how we like it. Perfect thickness, I think. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this put into some jars and we will get that in the freezer. All right, our timer just went off. Excellent. And these are gonna sit here for five minutes and then we'll take them off. And then in the meantime, this couldn't be any easier. We're just going to ladle our pizza sauce into each of the jars. Because these are gonna be freezing, we want to leave a decent amount of headspace because things do expand. So I'm gonna go to about there. And you can do whatever size pizza sauce container you want. Sam and I, like I said, aren't crazy on like a ton of sauce. We like to taste it. And when it's homegrown, I feel like everything is just a lot more flavorful. So I think it requires a lot less. And then if we're having people over, we can just take two of these out, but we don't have pizza like back to back to back. So I find that a pint is too much. So I like to go a little bit smaller and that works great for us. We usually make two pizzas at a time. So two for Sam personal pizzas, for me lunch and a dinner size pizza. And that is exactly how we like it. So just fill these however high you like, or go bigger if you have a bigger family or you like more sauce. Best part about doing things at home is you can make it fit your needs. Okay, the final thing 
I want to get done today is get all of our pulp laid onto our tray. I'm really, really pleased with our um, mill. I mean, these are pretty dry for, I don't remember how much that thing cost, but I know it was pretty, I mean, equipment's expensive, it always is, but for what it is, it was pretty reasonable. So I'm thrilled with that. So I'm just breaking apart the little pieces. And then what I'm gonna do is next time I run my freeze dryer, I'm gonna stick these in. And I know this is pretty popular to do. This will create a powder then once it's dry and then we can grind it up in the Vitamix and that will allow us to make a kind of tomato paste. So anytime I need to thicken anything or add a tomato flavor to something like chili or whatever, a pasta sauce, I can just throw some of this in and that will be done. A lot of that roasty toasty flavor is in here already because these are the skins and these are what were um, roasted. So a lot of that good flavor is going to be in here. Okay, that looks great. I'm going to call that a day. This is just going to go into the freezer. And like I said, the next time I run the system, it'll go in. All right, you guys, I have a serious kitchen to clean up now. A lot of the dishes are clean. That's the best part about water bath canning or processing jars is it's slow. And so it gives you time to clean up your kitchen while those are processing. So my dishes are all clean. I just need to put them away, scrub down the floors and the counters, and we are done for the night. I hope you enjoyed today's video and helping me preserve up all of our tomatoes for the year. It's something that is so nice to get off of my chest and also get out of the freezer in case we get another animal down. It's important that we have enough freezer space to put those into. So we now are good to go. We have our pigs at the processor as we speak. So I wanted to make sure that there was room for them coming home and just to get those out. It's important that we're using our vegetables in you know, a good amount of time so they don't get freezer burnt and so that they're up to the highest quality. So I am so excited we got those in. I am going to get this kitchen cleaned up. I appreciate each and every one of you being here and hanging out with me today. If you liked today's video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing if you haven't already. And I will catch you all in the next one. Bye friend.